Welcome to Super Fast Tortoise, and today we are going to go through my top 10 list of Theros Beyond Death cards. These are cards that I personally want. Now, I'm not saying a lot of cards that are not on the list aren't good, but personally, this list is a biased list of cards I personally want from the set. I have a few honorable mentions before we start the list, but before I conclude to that, let me just say, there are a lot of good cards in Theros Beyond Death, and I couldn't make a top 30, top 50 list because that is too long. So what I put together is a top 10 list of the cards I would use most out of all the cards from Theros Beyond Death. Let's do this, and we start right now. For the honorable mentions, we start with the full art basic lands in Theros. They're all just amazing and stunning. Look at how crazy they look. If you don't like them, that's fine. I love them, and I think they are too cool to pass up. But they're only on the honorable mentions because they're just basic lands. Other honorable mentions I have for this list is Drag to the Underworld. Even with the discounted rate it has, I don't think it can really make my top 10 list because I believe this card should have been able to target an enchantment as well, which is lacking in black. Idyllic Tutor makes the honorable mentions only because it is a reprint. If it was a new card, it would be in my top 10 list like nothing else. Transcendent Envoy is a great card for Voltron and Voltron strategies. Other than that, I don't think I want too many of this card, so it only makes my honorable mentions. My last three honorable mentions, Satyr's Cunning, Stern Dismissal, Staggering Insight are all great, amazing little cards. I want to play with them, I want to experiment with them, because I believe they fit in their own strategy very well. How great they are, I don't know. Are they cube good? They could be, especially for popper and peasant cubes. I just think they don't cause enough excitement to put in my top 10 list of cards I want from Theros Beyond Death. Now, for the top 10 Theros Beyond Death cards I want. Three, two, one, go! Starting at number 1, Satessin Champion, a 2 generic 1 green 1-3 one human warrior creature with constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Satessin Champion and draw a card. This card to me is amazing, and the one card I'm looking forward to the most in Theros Beyond Death. And I love enchantments, and so this is going into two of my commander decks and my cube. Number 2. Dryad of the Elysian Grove, a 2 generic, 1 green, 2 4 enchantment creature nymph. This is a really solid card. It says, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. And also, it says, lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. This fixes your lands and helps you ramp. This card is insane and nuts and we'll see a lot of commander play and we'll see play in other people's cubes. I want one for my cube because I think this is a really solid not broken card. Number 3 Kunaros Hound of Athreos a 1 generic, 1 white, 1 black, 3-3 three, three legendary creature hound. It has vigilance, it has menace, it has lifelink, and it says creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield and players can't cast spells from graveyards. This card is insane and it is amazing the stats on this card for how cheap the mana cost is. I believe this card will see lots of play in different formats. Maybe modern, I know commander, it will be a commander, and it will see play in cubes cause this is a Voltron god. This is amazing and I hope you find it amazing as well. Number 4, Galia of the Endless Dance. One red, one green for a 2-2 legendary creature satyr. It has haste. It has other satyrs you control get plus one plus one and have haste. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random. If you do, draw two cards. 
I think this card is just the sauce, the gravy for what miniature gruel decks want to do. And by miniature, I mean small weenie for a gruel, because this gives you the answers really quick. You might dodge a card you might want, but you're getting two more cards to advance your hand. So this card is absolutely insane to me. So this is my number four choice. Coming in at number five, we have Shadow Spear. One generic legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample and lifelink. And you may pay one generic. Permanents your opponent's control lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. And its equip cost is two. This card is insane. It's good for cube, commander, it's good for any format that wants to play it. And I believe this is the right pick to be in the middle of the list at number five. Coming in at number six, we have Rise to Glory. Three generic, a white and a black sorcery. It says choose one or both. One, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Two, return target or a card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Or both of those options. This card's insane. In commander and in cube, this can get a Eldrazi conscription from the yard with a creature to attach to it. This card is underrated because I don't see a lot of people talking about this card. This card is going to make waves and people are going to be surprised by it. Coming in at number 7, we have Siona, Captain of the Pileys. One generic, one green, one white, 2-2 two, two legendary creature, human soldier. This is uncommon, alright? I don't believe that this is uncommon. So let's read what it says. When Siona, Captain of the Pileys, enters the battlefield, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand and put the rest at the bottom of your library in any random order. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1 white human soldier creature token. This card's insane at uncommon level. This is definitely for the Voltron style enchantment aura decks. And I love this card. This card is made just for my auras deck that I have in Commander. My Rafik of the Mini deck. So this has got me excited. Theros Beyond Death has a lot of good cards that people like me have been waiting for. And that is why this makes my number seven card on the list. Here at number 8, we have Storm Herald, a 2 generic, 1 red mana, 3-2 creature human shaman. It has haste, and when Storm Herald enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. Exile those auras at the beginning of your next instep. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. This card is so flavorful and has daunted my mind with a lot of curiosity on how it's going to work or act as a card on the battlefield as a creature. I am so enthused to test it out and that is why it is my number 8. At number 9 we have Yero, Titan of Nature's Wrath. One generic, one green, one blue, legendary creature elder giant that's a 6-6 six, six beater. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it was escaped. Now whenever Yero enters the battlefield or attacks, you may gain 3 life, draw a card, and then put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. And it has escape 2 green, 2 blue, and you exile 5 other cards from your graveyard, and you can cast this for that cost from your graveyard. This creature is amazing. The effect alone is good enough to be on a sorcery and see play. The fact that it attacks and enters the battlefield with that effect is insane. And with its natural board state progression and how games work, this will be a cinch to see play in Commander, Cube, Standard, maybe Modern, maybe Pioneer. This card is nuts and this is why it's my number 9. And here at number 10, we have Destiny Spinner, a generic, a green, 2-3, enchantment creature human. It says, creature and enchantment spells you control cannot be countered. And for 3 generic and a green, target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments you control and that creature is still a land. Now this card is not to be trifled with. For such a low cost, it will see play in different formats. 
like Commander, Cube, for instance, Modern, Pioneer possibly. I believe this card has so much potential that it will go far for what it is. Now how crazy it is, I don't know. That's why I have it at the number 10 spot. But it is an obvious notion that this is a powerful card to be played. And that is the number 10 card. And that is my top 10 list of cards from Theros Beyond Death. I know there are a lot of good cards in this set. These cards I listed are my favorites. So let me know what your favorite cards are in the comment selection below. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications.